Hi, and welcome to our community sync number 17. Um, I think we can start with Sergius with a short demo regarding Minikube and Rocket Natis, and from there we, we continue. So, up to you. Okay, so this is going to be a, a boring session for the colleagues from the SICK Rocket Netis because I, showed, I will show exactly the same stuff that I showed yesterday. Um, so we have been doing some work to integrate Rocket into Minikube. And for those of you who don't know Minikube, um, it is a tool um, that makes it very easy for you locally to install a single node Kubernetes um, on your laptop, so to say. It launches a virtual machine um, currently using uh, boot to Docker and deploys all the necessary components um, that are necessary to, to launch Kubernetes. And it is meant for users who just want to quickly uh, try out Kubernetes on their local machines. Um, so there was an issue that was outstanding to integrate Rocket because we are apparently are working on Rocket Netties. And this is the first pull request that is out there. Um, the code changes in Minikube itself are pretty small. Um, it's just literally a few lines of code like in the 100-ish. Um, the more challenging thing that is to tackle is to provide an ISO image, which is actually you know, a, a good player together with Rocket. And the default image boot to Docker um, is not well suited because it doesn't include systemd, which we would like to use. So um, we created this Minikube ISO image, um, which is now hosted on the core S. That's the only difference from yesterday's presentation. Um, that includes all the necessary bits and pieces to configure a self-bootable ISO image, which is compatible with boot to Docker, um, and launches systemd um, and Rocket and Docker. So once you have Minikube running, um, hopefully everything still works. Um, the way you start it, at least in the current version uh, that is implemented uh, in the pull request, you just specify a dash dash container runtime equals rocket. Um, and then for debugging purposes, I also specified an ISO URL because I'm building a thing locally here on my machine. Um, and then the usual suspects you can uh, specify drivers, memory, and CPUs. So once that is successful, you should have a Minikube running. And Minikube manages also the whole cube control configuration for you. So you should also see a running cube VM um, to have a proof that it is actually um, a rocket-based um, rocket that is, that is running here. I just Minikube SSH into the virtual machine type rocket list, and we see all the parts that are being started by default um, by Kubernetes. So if we enumerate these guys here too, you, you see the same thing. And from here on, it's um, very easy to get on starting, uh, to get on started. You create your um, parts as you already know them. So hopefully this will work. Uh, of course, <laughs> the node became not ready for some reason. I have to debug this. This happens to me. But essentially, um, you keep on working um, as you uh, know from from the regular cube control command line. Um, I still have to debug some issues. For instance, I found today that I just forgot to incorporate the overlay module um, that I'm compiling into the Linux for, for Rocket. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all I have to show from, from my side. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully once all the facts are fixed, um, we can finalize this. And um, yeah, there is also a discussion going on whether we will eventually create a slim version of Core S um, that resembles um, the small Minikube ISO image after time. Um, but this is, yeah, currently out of question. Um, so, yeah, that's all I have to show from my side. 
Are there any questions? Cool, then we can keep on going. <laughs> okay, so I will take over again. Um, I just had a very brief like status update from my side. Um, we are getting going on the CCTL task, which is basically something again that Kubernetes needs and that probably is not, uh, I mean, in first place we, we try to to accommodate that one via the CNI plugins, but in the end it looks like it's not enough because it's not covering all the use cases. So we are going for like a full CCTR implementation and it's also part of the OCI spec, uh, how to set and configure CCTR stuff. And so I started from like putting it into UPC, that's ongoing. And then I also sketched briefly whatever will be needed in a rocket. Um, I'm not sure, if, I mean, that's already like quite rough detail, so need some more discussion. Um, I think it applies both to the CoreOS flavor, stage one and the KVM one, so it shouldn't change uh, depending on different flavors. And that's it, if you have anything from your side, from the Kubernetes or KVM side that doesn't look nice or sounds like a trouble for you just let me know and it's the good time to to come up with changes and and that's basically it's just like drawing a bit of attention on that one given that it's still in the early design stage so it's like i am I'm, I'm not got i'm not looking for like feedback right now but if you come up with anything just let me know and i will incorporate that one so and i was basically thinking about reusing also system D on that side, uh, it will make easier in the future to update the CCTL uh, if the Kubernetes CRI requires it, so for dynamic pods. That was my idea at least. I'm not sure that it's gonna be the, the final decision. And I don't know if you have any other things related to status updates or anything that you are, that you want to drag attention on in general that's a good time to, to speak. This is it. It's me or? Okay, it's John. Uh, the CC, CCTL proposition is uh, the same as Docker one? Um, it is quite similar to the, to the Docker one, yes. Um, I discussed that with the Kubernetes guys and they told me more or less what they need. Um, so basically there is some kind of filtering before applying CCTL, which is like not definitive filtering, it's mostly like trying to avoid screwing up the pod. And Kubernetes is also doing some filtering, some like fine grain filtering on their side and they want basically the runtime so rocket to fail in case if there is any CCTL that is not namespace or not safe from their point of view. And apart from that, that's nothing else too fancy. Okay, so KVM flavor won't support this. We can't uh, call C uh, CTL from VM to do affect the host. Uh, if you need uh, some changes, for example, uh, change uh, file descriptors, you can do this in the VM. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I see. So yeah, like, um, the main target, the main goal is like changing CCTL in the pod only. And for the weird case where somebody wants to change CCTL on the host via whatever is inside the, the virtual machine, the KVN one, it's like something like a, a bit of a corner case, but we can discuss what would be the semantic of that. I'm not sure if people really are looking into that. So we, maybe we can just say that's something we don't support. Um, not sure. It doesn't look like a primary use case for that one. Okay, I will look in onto this feature. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Any other update from any side or something that you want like to, to highlight? I got updates. Uh, I reworked the QM stuff in my pull request. It's also related with the point uh, plans timeline for LKVM QM, right? Uh, I 
I reworked uh, the build system in the rocket to build uh, two images for a single flavor, KVM flavor in parallel. So you can uh, buy one configure, one, one, one make, uh, build uh, images with LKVM and with QMU. And it's reward. I got uh, three issues right now. It's a uh, Iagus issue. Uh, he noticed that it's a uh, control C which kills container. It can't be like that. Uh, I got uh, one more issue with make clean. It's still in make files. As I said in IRC, I got nightmares with this. And uh, third issue. Aha, okay, the static, right? Uh, there's still um, needs to be discussed because uh, we are initially I was appending the static uh, static parameter to the QMU while configuring it, and uh, Yago is in troubles with uh, running. Yago is had troubles with this, and without static, uh, it works for me, it works for him also, but uh, we got the problems with test in CoreOS, right? Pavel uh, found it. I yeah, with CoreOS, we are missing lib Pixman lib, and we can't uh, run a racket with uh, QMU. So I think the static flag needs to remain, but uh, I need to figure it out what problems Iago is had with this. Which level is missing from CoreOS? Sorry. Give me. Like, is it a single one or is it like many things that you are missing? It's the first one the uh, compiling was broken, right? Or okay. But that should be related to graphic, graphical stuff, if I'm not wrong. Yes. So it probably it may be possible to disable that one. Oh. Not sure. What it looks like I'm just like speculation here. Okay, I'll check it. Yeah, but in general, I agree that maybe statically it's a bit better, so you don't depend on anything else in. Statically is better, right? I also hear some voices. <laughs> okay, so um, my question on that is, was more or less like, what is your plan on, like, your plan regarding um, LKV and Kim? Because there are some users I've seen on bug reports that they are like wondering what what, what will be the direction and on my side I'm wondering uh, like, what is the yes. timeline for that. Uh, so. Right now on our side we're testing and focused mostly on QMU. We are testing only with QMU. And we are planning to swap LKVM to QMU in the main line but uh, right now uh, I just uh, implemented it in parallel, right? Uh, if uh, we are targeting actually the 1.4 Kubernetes, right, Pavel? 1.4 Kubernetes? Yes. And uh, I also plan to uh, change the default hypervisor from LKVM to QMU. To remain the LKVM, but uh, have the QMU as default. Okay, so the target is to have for the 1.4 Kubernetes both QEMU yes. and LKVM and QEMU the default, right? Uh, both QEMU and LKVM, but I don't know if I can uh, make it default before. Okay, one. but that, that's the idea at least. Yes, yes. Okay. So that would be like end of this year, so fourth uh, part. Right? Actually, it's October. Mid September, earlier mid September. Yeah, September. Okay. <laughs> Something about I wish it was the end of this year, really. <laughs> okay, sorry. I was not aware of the time. Okay. Um, if there is anything that we can have there, for example, the make file and testing whatever libraries and static stuff in OS, just let us know, like open new issues or whatever. Uh, 
What about Krzesimir? He's working on Rocket still because he's the author of the Make Files, right? Yeah, at the moment he's the one that is like knows the better that part. So yeah, he's the one to ping to gain some knowledge. Uh, I also touched into it a bit, so I can also help. I I will describe the issue on GitHub and I'll point you. Okay, thank you. Thanks. And that's it. Um, then I think I have Casey that wants to ask something or to discuss some design on the... Uh, we can hear you. Still can hear you. Just go. Okay. Where am I? Okay. Uh, uh, I need speakers. Uh, so, a uh, long requested feature has been modifying Etsy hosts. There's two motivations for it. The first is that, uh, first I want to say that it's very ironic that my Mac desktop is the only one having trouble and everyone's Linux desktop works great. <laughs> Um, so a uh, long, uh, long request feature both on, on the Docker side and on the Rocket side is for managing Etsy hosts. Uh, the two cases where we would want to do this is to set the pod's domain name. The only way, the standard way in Linux of doing it is by adding an entry to Etsy hosts. And the other is that people want to add Etsy hosts file uh, entries at runtime, at, yeah, at runtime um, uh, on the command line. The only case where this is particular, this is totally uninteresting except for do we know of any cases or is it a problem to overwrite the existing Etsy hosts in a particular application's image? I mean, if the user explicitly requests it, then it's not a problem? No. Sorry, say that again? If a user explicitly requests it, it's not a problem in my opinion. Sure, well, the question is do we want to, uh, one of the expected things is to set the domain name, which would then, which would definitely be overriding Etsy hosts. So is that something we should enable by default or is that yet another command line option we should add? I think I commented that I didn't think domain name was really a uh, Etsy hosts thing. Like Etsy, host, Etsy host name or no, you, you Etsy hosts. The domain name is set in Etsy hosts. So host name, for example, is taking it from there when you say host name. Uh, and, uh, I thought the host name was an attribute that the kernel could provide back, and it does not have to match anything on your file system. Anything. No. Nope. Host name can't have FQDN. Host name only has the host name. Mm -hmm. So something that we were thinking actually is to define some, uh, some semantic like uh, Rocket will take care of etc host and etc resolve.conf so they will be like immutable and you will basically specify some option in Rocket to, to configure them. And if you have anything else, any other requirement like you want the host to dynamically update your resolve.conf or etc host or you want the application inside the pod to take care of it. Basically, you will provide your own volume and you will be able to, to mutate them. Sure, the, 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 the bigger question is, are there, are there people, are there uses now for people with images that expect Etsy hosts to show up in the image? I'm, I'm still caught up on the domain name being an attribute of Etsy host thing. For example, my domain name of my laptop is not in my Etsy host file. If I type pseudo domain name foo, then I have changed my domain name to this call yeah, the that's, the, that's, the, that's the NIS domain name. Yeah, is that not what we're talking about? No, we're talking about the, the, typically you do the DNS domain name. I'm, okay, we're, we're talking about totally different things in my head. Okay, that's why I'm yeah. stupid. Thank you. I mean, unless, sometimes, unless someone is running NIS, but like, God help you. So 
So I mean, basically, my, my only even I only even bring this up because it just feels really smelly to add another command line flag to do what we said we were going to do all along, anyways. Um, but it, somebody might be breaking a made break behavior that someone is dependent on. Uh, it's sort of crappy either way. Uh, I think we need this kind of option because in some Kubernetes tests. Uh, there is a requirement that uh, hostname should be resolved to the, let's say, flannel IP. And we have uh, two IPs per uh, pod, and I can't, I don't know which one should be resolved to the hostname. I think this is unrelated to issues in Kubernetes for the most part because the kubelet already writes its own Etsy hosts and Etsy resolve comp files, which it bind mounts in, and bind mounting things over things works fine. And Rocket, of course. Yeah, which, okay. will, which, which will be something that will be like, mm, and indeed after this change, like Rocket will take care of that directly if you don't need to ever update it. Um, although it's good to know that it also is writing uh, the result of the flannel IP because that's right now, the, basically it's going to be getting whatever IP address is the first network. Okay, I'll have to think about this because we are, because I think we can do that automatically if you don't, if Kubernetes doesn't want to do it, um, we need to make sure we do it right. I'm not sure that there is a goal of making sure that that behavior is not managed by the kubelet. I don't think there is, but there might be. I think it's just be like, I think that it is impacted by this change anyway, so better to get it right. Yeah. Okay, it's good to know that uh, Kubernetes is, is also screwing with Etsy hosts. We need to make sure that that is, still works. Nonetheless, uh, it's still not obvious what to do in other cases. Um, so if anyone has any thoughts, come either bug me on IRC or uh, we can talk about it now. I think you can drop the link in the, in the document. Okay, we'll do. We'll comment. Okay, and then I guess the T1 had some other question related to what we do with Fly, right? I remember that coming up last time, and I just wanted to know if there's been any uh, further discussion or stuff happening there. Um, I think there's been no further discussion. What I was trying to understand and to get more or less, it's also something related to this, uh, and it is what is Kubernetes currently doing when a pod is specified with host IPC and host uh, PID, which basically is not joining, it is joining the host namespace. Uh, what is the semantic for that in other cases? So like when you are not running the usual core as flavor stage one, and what, what we should do in that case, it is kind of related to fly because um, I was trying to implement in system D and spawn some way of sharing the namespace of from the host. So bringing it like more in line to whatever fly is doing in order to try to kind of scrap this possible fly or not. And, but I'm, I'm a bit like puzzled to what Kubernetes expect on that side and what we are trying to do and what is the use case in general. So I, the answer to your, your question is basically just another question. I mean, it feels like the right thing to do is to be able to expose that in stage one core OS if at all possible. But it, being able to individually tweak most namespaces, not about namespace, but most other namespaces does make sense. In the same way you can set your network to post it makes sense too turn off isolation for some, some applications for some parameters. But. Yeah, and that's why I started working on that. Uh, that's one reason. The other one is like to try to minimize the use of fly. But then I, I started wondering like, what do you do in that case for KVM, for example? Like you can, does it, does it still take into account the host IPC and host PAD flag or you just discard it or what? I think it should fail to run those because it is, often going to be nonsensical 
Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when you set those, the reason is that you want to interact with other things on the host, potentially other pods, and if it's other pods, then there's no way you can. Okay. So, yeah, so it's a, it's a bit... It's, it's a bit tricky. Let's say that I'm trying to push more into this direction of making like fly very specific to a very case for a very single case, like when you are running a single application, which is completely non-contained and for everything else trying to use the normal, the normal pods, the normal flavors. Yeah, that, that would be my preference as well. And then I'm also okay with there being still one special thing in the form of hypervisor versus namespace based and having semantic differences there mm -hmm. but ha having the third one of to root based instead of namespace based seems like a very weird uh, weird one to have yeah and and we see this is start this distinction like coming up again with for example the cctl stuff you cannot expect to to change some cctl in the host from the kvm or other things similar so Okay, so just to, just to recap, this is my pull request for system D, which has not been rejected at the moment, so probably it's landing at some time, at some point. Um, where it is? But yeah, in, in general, it would help like some kind of better formalization on Kubernetes size and what is, what is the semantic of all the Docker specific stuff in the case of, for example, KVM and other different containment technique. Because it is something that keeps coming and coming and it is never addressed properly. And in general, I think that mm, we are pushing Canteen and OpenStack and everybody else into using some kind of privileged pod, wherever, wherever it is possible instead of fly, especially if they, if they need to run multiple applications together. And so I think that in the long term, fly is just covering that specific use case of running a single application like in a special environment and that's it. I don't feel like we should formalize it at the moment, maybe once we get a bit in a bit better position and we have everything sorted out, we can do that. If it is okay for you. That, that makes sense. There's more curiosity than there to need. Okay. Uh, anything else for discussion? I guess it's a no. So I think we can you can say we are done here and just end the meeting. Okay, so thank you everybody and see you in the next meeting. Bye.